This is a 2020 Honda Civic 1.8e CVT sedan. Now the Civic is very close to my heart because my very first car was a Honda Civic EG model. Now I'm going to go around this car and I'm going to show you its features and fun facts. Then I'll take her out for a drive just to see if she still drives like the Civics of old. Let's do this. I borrowed this Civic from a good friend of mine who was choosing between getting this brand new Civic or going with a relatively new Chinese brand. Now luckily, they decided to go with the Civic and its proven reliability. The Civic has always been known to be a sporty compact car, light, nimble, and quick. The 10th generation Civic, however, couldn't be accused of being small anymore. In fact, its dimensions has grown to be larger than the Honda Accord 20 years ago. It still maintained its sporty design character though, and you could see it with the bulging front fenders and that rake back hood, all the way to the sleek, steeply raked windshield that this modern Civic has. It gives it that look as if it's still racing through the wind even if it's just standing still in the parking lot. Starting off with the front grille, the Civic 1.8e sports a ton of chrome up front. Now this is pretty standard across all the models in Honda's lineup now except for the RS Turbo and the Civic Type R. Now, Honda has this penchant for using a lot of chrome that will help you brighten up the front of your car. Now, looking at the headlights, you will see that this is one of my favorite design cues of this newest Civic. The headlights sport an array of LEDs that gives it that futuristic vibe to it as if it just came out of a sci-fi movie. Now aside from the LED headlights, it also comes with daylight running lights and it also has halogen fog lamps here at the bottom just in case you will be driving at night on a foggy road. The reason behind that is LED headlights normally have a difficult time penetrating the fog and that's where your halogen fog lights come in. Moving on to the wheels, the 1.8 E variant sports 16 inch wheels wrapped in 21555 rubber. Now, if that may seem a little bit small for you, it is, it, and it does look small given the size of the new Civic's body. However, the 18 inch wheels are reserved for its sportier brother, the RS Turbo. Moving on to the engine, what you have here is a 1.8 liter iVTEC engine that is good for 141 horsepower and 174 newton meters of torque. The numbers for this engine is decent for a compact sedan like the Civic and it should haul you from one place to another with relative ease. Moving on to the trunk, this is where all that added size and dimension went to because as you open the trunk, you will note that you have 525 liters of trunk space. This is a ton of space for you to put in a large suitcase and a bunch of your stuff. Now, if 525 liters is still not enough, all you need to do is pull on these latches up front and you can move over to the back seat and tumble the back seat down which will now give you more space in your trunk to haul all your junk. Looking at the key fob of the Civic, you will note that it has the usual lock and unlock button and a trunk release button. But looking over here to the left side, there is another button that has a circular thing. All you have to do is hold this for a few seconds and it will turn on the ignition of your car as well as the climate control. Now, this is normally a feature found in most Western cars with winters so that their engine would start running hot even on a cold winter day. But it also has a use here in the tropics because you don't want to go back to a sweltering hot car in the parking lot. And when you get there, your car is already running and the aircon has already cooled the cabin. Now, let's go inside the Civic and check out the interior. 
Upon opening, the first thing you'll notice is the 1.8E does not sport leather seats. Instead, it comes with black cloth, but you cannot see it because in this case, the owner decided to put on and install the free seat covers that came with the car. Looking at the instrument panel, you will notice that the gauges are in full LED digital display. You've got your tachometer front and center, and in typical modern Honda fashion, a digital speedometer right there in the center. You also have some information sh sharing your range, your average fuel economy, and the usual fuel gauge and engine temperature gauge to the right and to the left of the car. Now you will note that over here you have a green leaf sign which already tells you that the Civic is in eco mode. This full LED display shares a more futuristic and modern vibe to the instrument panel of the Civic which is complemented by this 7-inch touchscreen infotainment system that is also equipped with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now all Civic variants come with a push start engine start stop button and all variants offered in the Philippines come with this CVT transmission. Now the CVT transmission may be the only sore point that I could say about the Civic's lineup because the Civic is still that sporty compact sedan or hatchback and a CVT simply has no place in a sporty vehicle. That's really a negative point for me when it comes to the Civic and we will find out in the driving impressions how the CVT reacts. Honestly, Honda should have stuck with a 6-speed automatic or even offered a 6-speed standard transmission for the Civic in the Philippines. Moving down from the CVT transmission, you have your electronic parking brake and it has a brake hold feature. It uh, basically holds the brake when you reach a full stop and then just depress on the gas and it will just go automatically. Since the Civic is a compact sedan but it's still marketed towards families, let's take a look at the space in the back seat just to see how roomy it is. The front seat is adjusted to somebody of my height. I'm five foot six, and as you can see, because of the enlarged dimensions of this new Civic, you've got a ton of knee room and leg room inside the back seat. It's very comfortable and I've got a great amount of headroom as well. So now that we've gone around this Civic and we've discussed all the features and fun facts of this car, it's now time to take her out for a drive just to see if she still drives like the Civics of old, just like my very first car way back in the mid-90s. Let's go for that drive right now. Now it's time to take the Civic out for a spin. The first thing you'll notice is the roominess of the cabin. Given that the size of the Civic has grown to be larger than an Accord 20 years ago, the Civic's cabin is very, very spacious. It feels like I'm driving a mid-size sedan rather than a compact sedan. Steering is also quite responsive and nicely weighted. I like the fact that even if it's an electric power steering system, Honda was able to tune it quite well to give it that feel of a mechanical power stealing assembly. It doesn't feel artificial. It doesn't feel over boosted, unlike some other Japanese offerings. Acceleration response. All right. Now, you see, that's why I really don't like CVTs. The response is decent. Okay, let's try it again. But there is that noticeable lag before the engine acceleration picks up. It's decent, but it's no sports car. It's no sports sedan. Unlike the Civics of old, this CVT is where you'll note that Honda decided to take the fuel efficiency route for the Civic. Instead of giving it that raw responsiveness that we've known from older Civics, this new Civic is quite anemic when it comes to response, unfortunately. The seats are a little bit on the firm side as well. It's supportive, but not cushy. Air conditioning is good. I just set it on auto and it's cooling the cabin well enough. It's quite obvious that 
Honda tuned the Civic to be more on the comfort and fuel efficiency side, especially when it comes to the cabin and when it comes to its responsiveness. And it makes quite a good amount of sense because the people who owned Civics from the 90s have now all grown up. They now have families and they want something that is decent, comfortable, and fuel efficient. And that's what this Civic can give. Unfortunately, if you're looking for something that is a little bit more sporty, you should opt for the RS Turbo, which unfortunately also comes with a CVT, or go all out and pony up for a Civic Type R with its awesome six-speed manual transmission. Now that is a Civic that drives like the Civics of the 90s. So there you have it. That is the Honda Civic 1.8 eCVT sedan that is being sold in the Philippines. Now some people might say it's a confused vehicle, but I believe it's Honda's way of answering to the needs of a broader market. You've got your sporty design cues, you've got your fuel efficiency, you've got your larger capacity that would haul your family, and it's all wrapped in one compact and affordable package. Now, how much does this Civic retail for? The 1.8e retails for 1,185,000 pesos. Now, if you consider it, that is tremendous value for a car that gives you its awesome Honda reliability and a lot of features and creature comforts as well. Once again, guys, thank you for watching one of my videos. My name is Ray Gan, and if you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, comment below what you think about this 10th generation Civic, and I will see you again in the next video. Bye-bye.